Hi, I'm Aaron Gasser and I'm going to take you through the spin and hook kick. This kick is one of the most destructive kicks in Taekwondo, but before you go on to this kick, make sure you have a solid foundation of your basic hook kick. This will make the spin and hook kick a lot easier to learn and will make the kick more efficient. The easiest way to first do the spin and hook kick is to go into your side stance, so my feet are parallel facing this direction and I'm going to be kicking towards you. Step one, to turn on the ball of your foot, make sure now your heel is pointing towards where you're kicking as well as your hip. From there then, step two, we're going to look over our shoulder to spot the target using our peripheral vision. We're going to lift the leg up from a low chamber, hook kick through and recoil the leg all the way back behind. Here's the kick from side view. So step one, turn on the ball of the front foot, making sure your heel and hips are in line with where you are kicking. Step two, look over your shoulder, spot the target using your peripheral vision, lift up the leg, hook kick through, striking with the heel, and bring the leg all the way back behind. Those are the basic steps for the spin hook kick. But if you're still struggling, we can do the basic hook kick from different positions to get used to the spin hook kick. For example, when we first do a hook kick, we do it off our front leg. Then you learn to do it off your back leg. From there then, to get used to the spin hook kick, obviously, you have to learn to turn. So you can start at something so simple with your back to where you're kicking. Turn, hook kick. So you're getting more used to having a little turn before you go. After you've done that then, you can start by putting the leg behind, so you hook kick in from here. Then you turn to that position, then you get the hook kick. So you're breaking it down step by step to get a better understanding of the spin hook kick first. Also, when you're first learning the spin hook kick, make sure you don't try and go too high, as you'll have more control the lower the hook kick is. So when you're turning, then you can focus on the acceleration of the hook kick, and you can work out what parts you're hitting with, control the spin and the hook kick a lot better. Now we're going to break the spin hook kick down into more detail. First pointer is your starting position. If you're starting from a front stance, then at some point you're going to have to go into your centre line or your side stance to throw the spin hook kick. If I stay in my front stance and throw the spin hook kick from this position, I'm going to kick where my hips are in line with. My hips are in line over here, so if I turn on the ball of the foot, now I'm facing this way, my heel's pointing towards that way, I'm going to end up hook kicking over there. The person I want to be hitting should be directly in front of me, so I'm going to miss the target, or if I connect, it's going to be minimal power. To telegraph less from our front stance, we can lift the ball of our foot up in the air, turn into the centre line, drop onto the ball of foot, throw the spin up kick, and recover. That way, we're not lifting and stepping and showing the person what we're doing. It's just a little quick motion that you don't really see as much as taking the step. Be very open-minded with your starting position. Some people have different abilities. Some people will be able to turn on the ball of the foot, they'll have the hip flexibility to come around. Some people haven't got the hip flexibility. What you'll need to do is take that extra step across. The problem with that is if you're sparring, you can get kicked in the back, you're open for a little bit longer. But it will help you throw your spin and hook kick. It will be a lot easier for you because your hips are already a half the way around. When using the kick in sparring, I suggest that you throw the technique as a counter or set the technique up first. This way, the technique is better disguised and you've got more chance of landing the kick. If you do the spin nut kick by itself, it's a big motion, so you find the person can quite easily block your technique. Here are a few examples. When doing the kick, turn and spin on the ball of the foot in one circular motion. Try not to go on the heels. The best way to describe it, if I go up onto the balls of my feet, yeah, I'm nice and relaxed, I can stay there for quite a long time, quite easily. If I go on my heels, and you can see I can stay there for a little while, but eventually I have to compensate the balance and I have to move. So when you throw in your spin and hook kick, if you want to be in good balance, then you want to be staying on the ball of your foot. The main pointer for any spinning kick is to focus on and spot the target. If you turn on the ball of the foot and you're getting lost now, you're just following the room, then you end up throwing the kick and hoping for the best. You don't know where it's going to go. 
Whereas if we are focused on the person in front of us, we turn on the ball of the foot and then we spot back at them, then we know we're going to throw that spin hook kick on target. We can also see whether the person are prepping to block the technique. So we could change it if we wanted to. We could change it to a back kick. We could change it to a, a, a diagonal downward kick just to go loop over the guard. We've got loads of options. We might even turn and realize they've stepped back. So we go, oh, right, we'll just pull the technique. There's no point in throwing a technique that you know is not going to land. So the main point there, focus on and spot the target. If you want a faster spin hook kick, talk your upper body and continue the momentum into your hips, follow the momentum through into your chamber, hook kick out just to the side of the opponent's head, the shorter the better for speed, because the kick will be coming out a lot faster. If we obviously wanted more power, we'd have a bigger motion to go through, the more momentum building up with the kick, the stronger the kick would be. But for speed, we want it as short as possible, just quick, go through, scores our point. A good way of understanding the speed and power aspect is to think of it as a rain kick because a hook kick is like the rain kick, just the opposite way. So if I wanted a quick rain kick, I'd lift the leg straight up, I make the rain ace kick nice and fast. So if I'm doing the spinning hook kick, I turn, I don't want to be making a big motion, I lift up, I make it short. Whereas if I want more power in the rain kick, I end up doing the full rain ace. I swing, I get more power, it builds up the momentum, smashes through the opponent's head, more chance of causing damage and getting the knockout. So when I'm doing the spin hook kick, if I want to go for the knockout power, I get bigger motion. So the kick goes straight through, more power, bam, into the head. Another way to get more power is to throw your body weight into the spin hook kick. The only problem with this is it's hard to recover and the kick is less controlled. When connecting with the kick, make sure you hit with your heel and the foot tends to protect your foot, just like I mentioned in the hook kick tutorial. When we are hooking through the person's head, our shoulders will help us carry through and the centre of mass will shift so we come back to our starting position. If we don't turn the shoulders at the end, we end up letting the hip lead first, not recovering our kick, that well. So when you hook kick, we want to turn, hook, carry your shoulder through and then you come back to the starting position a lot easier. When sparring, you can use the flat of the foot for more range. The main target areas are to the jaw or to the temple. Pivot and spin in one circular motion and back to your starting position. When doing the spin hook kick, try and keep your body as upright as possible as you'll have more control over your technique and you'll be able to recover a lot easier. If we lean, we end up having less control over the technique and we have to wrench that hip down to recover, which makes it a little bit harder. Also, if we're leaning too much, our body weight is going backwards. So the kick will have less body weight going into it, which means we lose power. Wherever the body is going, wherever your power is shifting. So if my body weight is coming right around into the kick, I get a stronger kick. If I'm leaning away, obviously the power is going to go down a little. However, when you're experienced with the kick, you want to be doing what I like to call a controlled lean. So you're out of the range of kicks and punches with your upper body. If I keep my body upright when I do my spin up kick, that means my upper body is going to be closer to the opponent, meaning I have more chance of getting kicked or punched with the counters. So if I lean slightly but control, then I'm further away from these kicks and punches, so I've got less chance of getting hit. When we are in close range, we can fold the hook kick in to strike to the back of the head. Instead of thinking of it going all the way through now, try and think of it as your knee coming up and then folding straight back into your bum. That way then, when you're in close range and they're right next to you, It'll fold in, strike to the back of the head, and cause the damage. Another way to initiate the spinning hook kick and close distance is the step through spinning hook kick. All we have to do is step forward with our back leg into step one, turn, do our spinning hook kick, and come all the way back. 
Bear in mind what I said earlier, if you're struggling to spin on the ball of the foot, we can easily change that to stepping across so you're more set up for your spinning hook kick, making it easier for you to throw. When you are used to the step through spinning hook kick, try and throw a technique instead of actually stepping to cover yourself on the way in. This concludes my tutorial on the spinning hook kick. So check my channel for other tutorials and subscribe for future tutorials. Thank you.